my Polish accent. Can you all hear the bag? No, sorry. I think perhaps we'd better have this on. Yeah, mm. yes. that's better. And if you continue not to hear, will you please raise a hand? Yep, thank you. <coughs> However, I think that uh, when I talk here in English, you will understand what I'm talking about, and my Polish accent perhaps has a flavor of a snob value. <laughs> <laughs> well, to begin with, for those who are scientifically trained, I would like to mention that the talk today is by no means a scientific paper learned, uh, read to a learned society. It's exactly what I'm prohibited to do. On the other hand, the title of the talk shows that I have to use certain technical terms and certain technical explanations. So I'm ready to answer questions in a highly technical way if you want to. I'm ready to answer questions in a more popular way, but I have to combine my talk in a way so that everybody has some food for thought. Now, the problem can be approached from three different angles, but I have actually done. Sorry. Is it Not very safe. Oh, thank you. <laughs> there are three different approaches to this problem, and uh, due to the time factor, I can only do the one. The first is from pure physics and biophysics, and that is so large a theme that I would, I would have to have to cover the ground much more than ten or twelve lectures to cover really deeply the ground. Analytical dissertation. The other is a purely psychological approach, which has been done already by Jung, the famous doctor and psychologist in Germany, but without, unfortunately, a solution because the solution needs three different approaches biophysics, psychology, and the third, strange enough, art. And perhaps I shall have time to mention a little bit about this art approach to the problem. Well, anyway, if there are any doctors here, they know that medicine is an art. It's a knowledge, but it's also an art. Well, the research started when I was a 12 years old boy, that means 53 years ago. When I was uh, thinking about the problem of those days, atoms, atomic physics. And strange enough, in the town where I used to go to school, and my father used to work, there was a physicist and a scientist who produced Bo Lightning in his laboratories. And that was running like mercury around the table, and when you press it, it made a terrific light. That was a result of the researches for about 50 or 60 years of his, and he invented the Hertzian waves well before Hertz published his uh, first paper on the subject, because it was in, 19, in 1860 or 62 before Maxwell even published his big papers on the electromagnetic waves. However, he kept that in strict secret, and not until about in early 20s, when my father, uh, due to a friend of his who was very close with the late engineer Rychnowski, that was the man, decided to raise an institute and finance it, where 18 doctors were employed. And he, the scientist himself, agreed to give his peculiar machine, but were some sort of Wimhus machine, but differently constructed, and whereby he could collect the paraelectric phenomenon, which I call paraelectric because it's definitely not electric, and use it for healing purposes. This institute was 
functioning for many years. No one was hurt, practically everybody was battered. And the doctors were very intrigued with the force used. That set me to think. And not until I came to this country in 1940, when uh, I met the first really deep research on the extracellular perception, that I started to make a re methodical research in the subject. Before, going through different universities throughout Europe, and studying about nine years in my hometown, University there, different subjects, theology and philosophy included. But going through the continent, to different universities, I was constantly collecting data about possible human radiation and possible explanation of the facts of this institute in the town where I have been born, not born, but studied. And when I came to this country, I had a sort of philosophical system, you may call it, or sort of rational system, which, to my astonishment, in 1946, just after the war, somebody gave me a work written by a diploma engineer, a French one, called Curé, which had all the appearance of a scientific work, with graphs and mathematics. It appears, anyway, a lot of figures in it, although not proper mathematics, as I, as I call it. So I started to study it, and it was, there were seven volumes of it. It was a dissertation on dowsing, and his arguments were absolutely insufficient. I was still skeptical about the whole business. Couldn't believe it. But still, curiosity prevailed, and I was still collecting data. Phenomena. Well, eventually, I found that I can myself douse. And the divining rod or the pedicle was working in my hand like mad. Why? What's the matter with it? And it did, it did work. There are no doubts about it. So I put my name into the British Dowsing Society. Thought perhaps I should meet some people there who will be able to explain me in terms of modern science, the phenomenon. There were quite a lot of talking, quite a lot of. Uh, experiments done, but still no scientific explanation at all. Later, about 1947, I found that I can heal myself. And the distance, that was too much for my for brain. To understand and to grasp how it is generally possible to do diagnosis at distance and heal a distance person who is, for instance, 100 miles or 200 miles or 1,000 miles away from me. That did not happen. It wasn't making sense to me at all. And I was really puzzled with it. But being a physicist, I started to think, what kind of possible radiation? Well, I've been through all sorts of yoga studies and uh, um, different new possible radiations, Gorovich and Kazamali and who knows what more Russian studies in this subject. I came across a book which has been published by a Russian professor, not published, a manuscript. When I was in Germany during the occupation, in the British occupation army in 1946, and the doctor brought me this, doc, this work. It was called In Search of Bioquantas. He says, you'll understand it because I can't. I read it, and I found there that in the Russian university there were at least two chairs in each university studying paraphysical phenomena and para extracellular perception. So obviously they put their heads together and they wanted to grasp this thing and they wanted to study properly the subject. There was no doubt the phenomenon was there. I have seen the people being healed by hands. I have seen people being diagnosed at distance where the doctors from Harley Street sent this sort of dowser, I mean, very good in, in diagnosis blood spot asking for a diagnosis. And the diagnosis was absolutely dead right. How on earth they knew it? The 
phenomenon of yogi. All that, and of course the extrasensory perception and the researches, couldn't make sense out of it still. But eventually, when I started to find out, to heal myself and find out how it's done, this phenomenon boiled down to the field, to the human field. Now, those who are trained physic, in physics, they know what the field means. But those who aren't, I have to explain what it means a field. <coughs> you sometimes so talk about the field of knowledge, the field of uh, research. Now, it's a domain of research, yes? Now, the field in physics means a stress in a space around a certain object, generally speaking, a stress. A certain kind of tension in the air surrounding the human body, for instance. Now, the researches of the human f on the human field have been started by Hans Spemann, a famous German um, uh, biologist and um, embryologist in the early 20s. And later on, picked up by Burr, Lang, Lang in, and uh, what the second one third was, uh, Nice in the United States, in Yale University, uh, the neurological, uh, neurologic, anatomic, and uh, anatomic department started to make a tremendous research on the human fields, and produced special instruments, vacuum tube, electrometers, sensitive to micro to a very high degree. And uh, the phenomenon of human field is today known. But, strange enough, they didn't think of things which are quite obvious, absolutely normal. No need to think of some sort of phenomenal radiation. As I the other day I was talking to a professor of physics in Cambridge who was interested in that. And there is a Cambridge group and they want to talk me there too. He said, don't you postulate a new force? I said, I do, but I haven't got proof for that, and that is ball lightning. I have done quite a lot of experiments. I can show quite a lot of things in the laboratory, the suspension of gravity and the rest of it. But it's uh, not enough for my scientific and critical uh, mind to prove this thing. But there is a very simple phenomenon. We have a field by emitting heat, and that is infrared radiation. What is the infrared radiation for those who don't know? It's the same kind of radiation as light is, or the wireless waves, electromagnetic radiation. Every one of us emits heat, and emits heat in the form of infrared radiation, which causes heat later on in the vicinity of the body. Now, this heat, being of an electromagnetic nature, goes with the speed of light. That means 186,000 miles a second. Well, short of it, two to six miles a second, short of 186,000 miles a second. Now, it is not the question of infrared as such. It is a question of pattern of infrared radiation, of the super superimposition of different waves emitted by every biological cell in our body by every, every little red blood corpuscles, but every little by the surface of the skin. And the pattern of it is unique to every one of us. It's absolutely unique. And in one eighth of a second, this field covers the whole Earth globe and is gone into space with the speed of light. So if you have 20 years today, or 30, or 60, 65 as I have, my field extends far into the galactic, into the, uh, in this galaxy, far into the stellar spaces. And if I would go at the perimeter of my field there and look at the Earth, I would see through the microscope a little speck, and that would be the Earth, and on the speck my body, and that would be me. And my field covers these colossal spaces. Now this field of heat, has a pattern of my own. Now, there are any medical men here, they know that in medicine we use now so-called medical thermographs. 
that is photographing the skin by infrared films. And strange enough, this film will show a pattern of heat on the skin, which is due to a certain illness, a certain dysfunction. Now this pattern will change with the moods and with the emotions of our own personality. There is a very well known today stress theory in medicine. I'm a medical student as well, as a physicist and psychologist. Uh, started with uh, Hans Zilli in Montreal, professor of the university there, who devoted 20 or 30 years of his researches on the influence of emotions on the human health. And he published a paper called The Story of Adaptation Syndrome in 51, as far as I remember, in Canada. And since then, all the universities accepted this theory because it's obvious that the emotions have definite influence on our health pattern. And more so, today, nearly 80%, if not more, of all the illnesses are due to emotional stress. There's no doubt about it. And now this emotional stress will change the pattern of the heat. The pattern, I think. Uh, how should I explain that to those who don't know anything about that? If the heat is, the uh, infrared is about one micron in length, so that means one thousandth of a millimeter, then one, one tenth of fifteen thousandth of an inch. Now these waves can be one like this, and another one a little bit longer, and another one still longer, and they will add up and make a sort of what we call in physics a waveform. And if you project that in three-dimensional space, then you will see that it's this heat it has a special pattern, totally different for each person, and this pattern changes with the moods of yours. It's different. And, of course, as it is a radiation, it carries on with it the picture of its source. So obviously, in the radiation around the human body, or in the field, you have the whole information about what's going on in your metabolic exchange. Everything is written there. And it's in future, and there is no doubt about that, that that will be the future of medicine, that they will dig into the field, and not into the body as we do now. Because the field will carry much more information, and still does carry much more information, about you, yourself, your emotions, than you can find out through the chemistry of the body. So the heat is a tremendous important factor and we don't need to go to sort of fantastic radiation, who knows what's more cosmic, somebody wanted, nonsense. But just normal heat, which brings you the information needed. Another field which is surrounding the human body, and that is sound. You know the doctor going with the stethoscope in the house, how to do Tommy, and by the sound he gives you the diagnosis. Because obviously, if you're in a car and you hear dick, 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 you know that something wrong with the machine. So already Robert Hooke in 1816, who was the uh, secretary of the Royal Society, Newton being the president, wrote to Newton a letter in which he says that <coughs> in future the doctor instead of using a very crude instrument which is a stethoscope will use something much better because obviously the friction going in the body is going to be compared to the factory and all this friction and all these noises will carry an information what's going on in the engine of the human body. Now today the doctor using a stethoscope is definitely that's a very crude instrument. You can produce a very sensitive micro, uh, uh, microphone, project the sound on a cathode ray tube, which is sort of television screen, and see the waveform which the sound produces, and analyzing the waveform, he will get all the information about different dysfunction in the human body. There's no doubt about that, again. And that is another information about the field of the human body. And there is a third field, yes, yet, and that is the electrical potential. Now, if you take your shirt off, you know the crackling of your shirt. The researches about the potential of the human body has been done quite a long time, and sometimes the difference of potential, the difference of tension, electrical tension on the body, comes up to 14,000 volts. But usually it's 
600, 700, and so on. And on the base of these, the electrocardiograms and, and electroencephalograms are ma being made. And the information through the change of the potential on the skin is the information is given what's going on inside. However, this potential influences the field and if you, if you imagine, and if there is somebody who knows something about wireless telegraphy, he knows that an ISO, when it's uh, emitting the radiation, can be represented as this, as such. The earth being, the ISO is connected to the earth with variable condensers. And this connection to the earth is actually the potential in the air. This is important because as you will see later on with the hand, you are actually influencing the field and by clearing the field you are clearing the body. Why? Because there is a feedback phenomenon. What does it mean feedback? A feedback, if you have an amplifier here, not an valve amplifier, and you put a signal here in, and the signal goes amplified there, you can go take part of this signal and feed it back again in here. Now, it's known in biology today that practically every neurological cell and practically every bio biological cell works on feedback phenomenon. So, if you take an ordinary mathematical summation from 1 to n, Every biological cells collected together will have a feedback as well, and there is a feedback. Part of your energy is going out of you and coming back into your own. But when the field is affected, the, say popularly, mm. the radiation of the body is going out and should partly go back to the body. But if it doesn't, it goes away through a refraction here when the field is wrong. The radiation is refracted, goes out. And you are lacking a certain pattern of radiation of your own. And according to the pattern, respective organ will be gradually deteriorated. So now I have given you a very sort of rough idea of technical side, physical side of the human field. But you can understand that it, as every radiation carries a picture of its source, like you have in any photographic camera, so also this radiation around the human body gives exact details what's going on in the body. And more, this radiation around is the function of your metabolic exchange and through the feedback it may be or bringing you health or if the feedback is lacking then you are starting to deteriorate in due time. This is a more or less, in a general terms, the science of the human field. Now, <coughs> there is, with this field connected, the so-called psychophysical field, I call it, for a very simple reason that this radiation will change according to your moods. If you are angry, and very angry, not only the blood pressure raises, and very much so, but the broad corpuscles, red blood corpuscles, will raise in a mom, in a one minute, up to half a million more per cubic millimeter. The temperature raises too, the capillary vessels enlarge, and you become red facet, and your fist are clenched, your teeth are doing all sorts of noises. What's happened? You are in a cramp, and in the meantime, your skin is emitting much more energy simply because the capillary vessel is large and heat is emitted much stronger. So obviously the field around yourself will be totally different with your mood of angerness. If you are, on the contrary, frightened, you cramp yourself, become pale, the heat is much less emitted. And because of that, your field is much poorer in heat.
So your moods, your emotions are reflected in the field perfectly. Not only in the field you will find out the information about your metabolic exchange. If there are medical students, RPH and RH2 and Rho, which is electrical resistance of the blood. <coughs> but it will give you the whole information about your moods, about your temporary moods or permanent moods. And if you have, so for instance, a jealousy, which will definitely affect your field, your electromagnetic in form of uh, infrared, and your sonic field will be affected as well. I have shown elsewhere in a paper to a scientific congress all the gravitation waves that sound is connected to static electricity and how it doesn't matter, I don't go into details here, you can refer to the paper. Your electrostatic field will be a hundred of the swell and your feedback will go away from you. So the certain organ in jealousy, the liver will be deprived of its feedback or the energy coming back to you. And after a while you will feel that your liver is going wrong. And they say jealousy is yellow. Well it's like something in it. Because your gallbladder will be affected. <laughs> anyway. Once I have established that, I shall come to a certain practical results I've got through my hands. When you remove your hand around your body or somebody else's body, you can feel at certain distances it's a very faint phenomenon. Pickling, heaviness, coolness, heat. You won't feel heat there, but if you put your hand a little bit further, you find that the heat is quite pronounced. If you have a very sensitive thermal start, you will find out the temperature decreases from the body and then increases again, and decreases and decreases again. Exactly like the atmosphere around the, above the Earth. The temperature decreases up to about, about 20 miles, then no, 10 miles, and then increases to 20 centigrade. And then decreases again and increases to about 400 centigrade. There's a change in temperature because the infrared radiation superimposed to one another and makes sort of noise. So that if you find the human body, if that is the human body looking from the eye, bird's eye view, then you will find certain layers around the human body, like that. And these layers can be felt with the hand, because simply if you introduce your own field into somebody's cell field, you tune your in imagination to investigate this peculiar field, this respective electrical impulse will go through your nervous system, peripheral nervous system, to the hand, and you will feel only what you want to find out. Stress theory back again. It's your mood which produces a sensitivity to this peculiar field. And I found, to my amazement, that these, these uh, layers around the human body are not regularly spaced. You are produces like a spectrum, crown of the sky spectrum. Here are two, then it's nothing, then it's another one, and then there are three or four. Like Barnard lines, if somebody knows physics a little bit. And then back again something, and back again here, three or four. <coughs> if there is somebody who knows a little bit about atomic physics, he knows what I'm talk, what I shall talk about eigenvalues. The ato atom, the nucleus of the atom, is a, a harmonic oscillator. Now the human body is a harmonic oscillator too, simply because the metabolic exchange is still in a motion, vibration, and it boils down back again to atoms, and if you do the ordinary mathematical summation from 1 to n, then if every atom is in a harmonic oscillator, the whole body must be a harmonic oscillator too. No mind how, it's a mathematical problem, you can use the Fourier series if you want to. But these eigenvalues around the human body do exist and you can feel it. And not only me or, or Mr. McMahon, Major McManoy, or somebody who claims I'm a healer. Everybody of yours can do exactly the same. As everybody of yours can re re read or write and learn or write, or writing or reading, learn playing the piano, exactly the same. You can learn how to cure the field. Now, if you 
find out, for instance, that in, I call it a spectrum, <coughs> not a spectrum of human field. If you find, for instance, that in a certain dysfunction you have three or four of these lines very strongly pronounced, you put your hand here, never mind how to do it, but if by your hand you can clearly see, cancel it. And this peculiar pattern of heat and sound coming here will not be refracted, but will be still reflected back against the human being. The feedback is reintroduced. And once the feedback, feedback is reintroduced, the organs start to feel much better because it gets its own energy, its own pattern of energy. You who are chemists, they know what the pattern of chemist is in the chemistry. Is. I'm not a chemist. A physical chemist, perhaps, yes. But not a chemist. The chemist doesn't tell me a single thing. I think it's a much too crude instrument in order to approach the human being. Generally, I approach the human being as an electrical, very uh, complicated electrical network. Every human nerve is carrying electrical currents. Every biological cell produces an electric phenomenon in electrolysis. Those students who know of medicine, if they know what pH is and <coughs> RH, they know that it's electrical pressure, of ionic concrete. It's all a big electrical factory. And this electrical fa factory must have an electric field around itself. And if you start to fiddle with the electrical field, then you are much closer to the actual structure of the illness as you can be with chemistry trying to find out something in the body by chemical things. But if there is a certain pattern lacking, certain chemical substance will not be absorbed at all. It will be repelled. Now let's do the reconstruction. I've got time to do good. How much time have you got? Because I'm very technical yet. I'm sorry for that. Now, I explained to you more or less in a very rough term, in a very general way, how the technical side of the human field works. It remains to you to say to you a few words, but only a few words, about the psychological aspect of this problem and how the whole thing links with faith. Suppose, for instance, that one of you, whom I just met now, have an intense disliking about me. Fair enough, I'm not, I don't blame him. And uh, we met, met again twice or thrice in different social gatherings, and eventually my friends are coming to me and says, now look, this bill there, he hates you. Well, I would not pay attention to the first thing, but if another friend tells me the same, and the third thing, friend tells me the same, and the fourth tells me the same, I'm starting to believe. And once I believe, instead of going to Bill and saying, now look, oh Bill, are you really hating me or not? I'm believing in that, and I'm starting a resentment in me, a negative emotion. And this negative emotion immediately will stir up my peripheral nervous system and immediately I, st I shall start to meet a different field. And through the set of beliefs, and that is a set of beliefs, that he is my enemy, he hates me. This set of beliefs will stir up a certain emotions, negative emotions. These negative emotions in turn will stir up a certain nervous tension in me and will produce a certain negative functioning of a kind of my high part of my body, which will be fitting with the pattern of my emotional distress or death. So you can see that belief can be a very important factor in stirring up emotions and by that producing a real dysfunction in the body. But it can be also the reversal process. If I, for instance, have a hatred through a set of beliefs that Bill does, doesn't like me and he is trying to, say for instance, to kill me. So after a certain time, suddenly I realize that he is my best friend. And the emotion will fall down. Oh, what a relief. Immediately through my peripheral nervous system, the 
electrical impulses will be sent down to the respective bodies and all this tension, this clamp will be released and out of my, of the blue, I'm back again normal. I'm just lost, for instance, through the set of beliefs, my kidneys were affected. I've lost the dysfunction of my kidneys. I'm back again healthy. And it's no good to give you certain pills when the root of the cause is an ecological set of beliefs. So you can see that the set of beliefs has definitely an influence on the problem of health. And if Christ said, your health, your faith has saved you, it's this sort of set of beliefs that somebody can release my cramp, my fear, by some sort of negative attitude towards life. Will you note, though, that Christ, when he said that, he always did some action. He moved his hands, he did something. And this something had an effect. He said that the set of beliefs is opening the gate, has saved you. Perhaps there are students here, I suppose, for the university. There are university students, some are here or not. Yes, oh, here you are. Well, you believe that you can cope with the difficulty of grasping the university knowledge. If you wouldn't believe, you wouldn't go to university. Because I'm at home. If you believe that you can be an architect or engineer or say a scientist or a doctor, this belief opens you the gate, nothing else. It doesn't give you the knowledge. It opens the gate that you dare to go and start to study. So the set of beliefs is the opening of the gate, but it's not the whole thing. So if we call this, say it's face healing, it's not the face as such. The face opens you the gate, relaxes your negative tensions, brings you to peace with yourself. And that may be the base for further improvement in your health. There must be an action from the other man, like Christ did. And me being a theologian, and I've studied theology now since 1923, how much is it? Quite a long time, isn't it? And I've been nine years theological students only in different universities throughout the continent. And when I finished, I just started to study theology, and I never stopped. And still, I think that I have just covered the A and perhaps B, not even C yet. But I knew that if Christ laid hands and cured, it's nothing to do with some sort of miraculous business. Because grace never destroys the nature, but builds upon nature further up. It enhances the natural phenomena, bring, gives strength to the natural phenomena, but never contradicts it. And therefore, there must be a natural law behind this healing hand. There is no doubt about it, from the strict theological point of view. And it doesn't destroy the face of whatsoever. It reinforces it. It gives you this assurance that the face is a rational business, and not irrational. Not out of the blue, I believe, and that's all. That's nonsense. That's a heap of rubbish. God has given you and me and all the others a reason, so that all our beliefs must be a reasonable thing. And I knew that if I start to look for the healing hand, some sense will crop off and a natural law will be found. And that is the field therapy. And the fourth field is what I call psychophysical field. That means my psychological phenomena, my psychological moods, my psychological collapse or elations will have a reflect, reflection in the field and will all clear the field or densify the field. Will clear the spectrum to the normal or will produce a much denser spectrum which will deteriorate me is according to my positive or negative thinking, my positive or negative emotions. <coughs> the further development was, I don't know whether you heard, uh, I think last week, Aim Baxter showed in the TV World of Tomorrow the phenomenon of plants. Did you see this program or not? Where plants at thousands of miles 
will respond immediately with an electrical response through an amplifier and uh, graph pen producing graphs to any trouble of the owner or gardener at thousand miles distance. How is that possible? No, simply. <coughs> and how is it possible that I can diagnose a distance and cure a distance? Very simple thing. If my field covers the Earth in one eighth of a second, obviously my field is everywhere, my pattern. Like the wireless waves are everywhere. You can tune in by very sort of fine-tuning device, and you can hear the wireless. You will say, yes, but you, my field is very weak. Well, in one watt of strains of transmission from Australia, from here, here, by a very simple operator, the man who talks in Australia. Now, the phenomenon of tuning in in the human pattern is quite different, because you tune in not in a wavelength, you tune in in a certain pattern of wavelengths, and every pattern reinforces the whole thing. I don't go into technical things. I want to tell you only one thing, that the field is everywhere, and if I tune in, I'm not tuning at distance. I'm tuning at your field here, although you may be in New York. doesn't matter. I give you proof for that. Have you read an experiment with time by time? Do you know sometimes that you are dreaming, mm -hmm. that you are mm -hmm. somewhere, and you see all the events? And then, two days later, the event are just banging at you. How is it possible? I haven't got time to tell, tell you that time is a field as well. And according to the frequency, you go to a different scheme of time, I should call it, perhaps. But it also, you sometimes go to a place and you see, been here, you know, the furniture. But you know that you haven't been here, and you did properly find out that you have been in dream there. How did you see that in dream? I, I may ask you. Did you eyes? You are eyes were sleeping in the bed. How did you see these distant things? By your field, your field pick up signals from far away and bring the signals back to you. It's a radar radiation. No, this infrared radiation goes out and reflects from the reflects and reflects from the surrounding and brings you the information, brings you the uh, impulses, but they are so weak that they don't raise the threshold of your consciousness. They are below the threshold of consciousness, you don't know. But if in a dream you remove the blockages and the threshold of consciousness goes down gradually, then a very weak impulse can reach your consciousness and you see in dreams something which later on you come to this place and you see exactly the same thing and you know that you have been. Well, simply because you are there, may I tell you that this exploration of moon is an old-fashioned business. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you, but your field has been there since your childhood. One and a half seconds is enough for your infrared radiation to reach the moon and to bring you in another one and a half seconds the information about the moon. But you have been blocking yourself in every blooming way, sorry to use the expression, in order not to receive the, the, the signal from outside. That's another thing that you would laugh at me to begin with, but you will see later that it's not laughable. You know where your thinking is going. It's not here, mm -hmm. it's in the field. Now you will see rubbish. All right, I'll give you an example. Let's go 12 years before in 1700 or 1600 or something. And I shall produce a little box and say, well, now look, this is the wireless. And in place, you will see, goodness gracious me, who is there talking? I said, oh, no, it's only a box. But actually, the talking is going in the air. He said, what? Well, yes, in the air, talking is here. But that is only transform, which brings you to your ear or a TV to your eye, a picture. He will say, well, beg your pardon, don't pull my leg. Obviously, that's not true, because I hear the boxes singing, and not the air. I can't hear anything in the air. That's nonsense. That's a damn rash story. <laughs> well, exactly the same thing is now when I tell you that your head is not thinking. The thinking process in, in your field, primary field, so-called organizing field, which has been very nicely coped with 
to Gustav Strömberg from the experiments I've told you before on the, the biological fields. The thinking is in your field and that is your transformer, your wireless, which brings you to your consciousness, the thinking. But what we have done, I told you that if you would go to the perimeter of your field, <laughs> that means somewhere 20 light years distance, and look at the Earth, you couldn't see it. Taking a powerful microscope, a telescope, you will see the Earth somewhere far away, and on this Earth is your body, and you have done everything possible through your life to limit yourself to your body. That is not me. That is my transformed consciousness to the physical world. If you study Stromberg, Spayman on the organizing field, you will find that the organizing field is outside space and temporal physics. I have no time to dig into that. But it's a non-physical field, primary field, which they call, Stromberg calls it the soul. He says, well, that's the only way, way we can call it. doesn't matter how we call it. But it's something which is outside space and time. I have been talking to you on here on the secondary field transmitted from your body. But the organizing field is the cause of it, which influences your body. Now, the thinking of yours is in the organizing field, which is outside space of time, and therefore the whole universe is a spectrum of that, because it comes in a different level. But by, by accepting the theory of fields, by one stroke, all the telepathy, all these phenomena of plants responding and having moods and responding to your thoughts and your moods and your dangers, all the, not all, but a great deal of extrasensory perception, I, have, I immediately solved its understanding. It's there where the solution should be found. So also the healing. If I, for instance, one of you come to me and say, Father, I don't like to be called Father, I'm usually called myself Andrew. I'm Andrew and everybody is with me. Wow. This is nonsense, all these dogs call out, put it on the wall between ourselves. We have to be really a family who loves each other and helps us. So they usually come say, Andrew, now, uh, something is wrong with my eyes, could you do something? Funny, funny enough, the, one of the youngsters with long hair, beautiful comb, came to me, He's losing his sight. Could you do something for me? So I said, all right. I think Mrs. Howe been there, uh, I think, the adult education course. And I, I knew that probably there is a pressure here, an electrostriction, particular pressure on the nervous system here. So I started to, from distance, to clear the field with my hands. And I felt it's sometimes even awkward. To my astonishment, all his hair stopped. Stand up like this. <laughs> so George the red boy passing by says, Goodness gracious, what are you doing here? I said, No, look, no, I haven't touched him. There's no fiction in this <laughs> I just clear his field, that's all. And then the hair started to follow my hand. Obviously it was an electrical phenomenon of electrical tension. No. I'm not permitted to go into technicalities why it works. It's matter. But it works that way. Many people write to me, I'm ill on this, on that, could you do something about it? And as their writing is a sample of their personality, because it has the same set of proportions, therefore I can tune in, as I call it, the field which is here present of any of you, by the writing or a sputum or a piece of hair is reinforced, it's a sort of amplified. Make again no time for explaining why. But it's a reasonable explanation. And by that I can introduce myself into your field and I'm not healing a distance, I'm healing a present person. Because your field is here, now present. To finish the talk, I've just been talking about now. Not yet enough. Nearly. <coughs> The art side of it. If you look at my face and at Major McManoy's face, 
you recognize that that is Major McMahon and that is, is Blooming Andrew, who talks and talks too long perhaps. And by what you recognize that? By a set of proportions. Set, a set of proportions of my face. I recognize a set of proportions, you recognize the set of, by set of proportions my face from this backboard or from this table. It has a set of proportions. And actually what we observe only by this vision is a set of proportions. And by hearing it's also a set of proportions, the quality of the voice, the musical instrument. We are dealing with a set of proportions. Now, <coughs> a crystal has a set of proportions, very beautiful. A beautiful in, uh, architectural structure has a set of proportions. Also, you admire it's beautiful and others. I don't like it. Why? There was a German scientist, a very handsome scientist, who started to investigate the proportions of the crystal and the angular of the flexion. And he found out that these proportions, strange enough, are musical proportions. Never mind how it come to that. But another Swiss German scientist, called Heinz Keimer, started to develop the theme, actually a professor of Hamburg University of Medicine, Myra Iba came to me when I was there in 1947 and spent about five hours we spent talking together because he knew that I'm interested in the subject. And he was writing at the time the history of medicine and told me something which left me a permanent memory that medicine only then will be really an accurate knowledge when we should be able to introduce mathematics into that. And I said, how else I can introduce medicine? Mathematics and medicine. Now I know if you approach the human body is a electrical phenomenon, electrical network, and mathematics obviously to be introduced there. And it's very swift mathematical calculus you can get to the diagnosis by measuring these different sources in the field. Never mind. But he drew me attention to the Hans Kaiser book called Harmonia Plantaro. I brought purpose this book here. Where he started to measure the after Goldschmidt of crystals, he started to measure the proportions of plants. And back again, we found that there are very simple proportions, boiling down to 3, 4, 17, 10, and so on. And eventually, it boils down to music. Because in music, if you take the middle C in the piano, 256 vibrations per second, and a certain length of the string, is a certain tension we give this tone. Then the next harmonics, an octave higher, will have a string half of this length, but will vibrate twice as much, 512 vibration per second. The next harmonic will vibrate three times, and the length of this thing will be one third of it, and so forth. So he took the middle C as the standard, as unity, and then he found that you can, with harmonics, you can spread two over one, three over one, four over one, and if you go down, you have upwards going with harmonics, you go the major scale proportions. Going downwards in harmonics, you have minor scale proportions. And <coughs> applying that to plants, he found that the plant grows above the ground in major scale proportions, below the ground in minor scale He wrote a music fascinating book, Harmonia Plantarum, and then he applied the whole knowledge of harmonics to the whole human life, and that is the book he's produced, La Book the Harmonica. First, scientific, mathematical treatment, and then the art treatment. It's simply fascinating how the human body is harmonic, possibly, but not only, but is harmoniously built. It's an art in itself. And now imagine that if you go into physics, you know that the atom is a harmonic oscillator as well. It has this electrons, this orbit on which the electron goes, it's only a reverberation of its main field in the nucleus. It's a harmonic oscillation and that is the music of the atom. Never mind how it explains all this is here in this book. So obviously the human body which is collected of the atoms by the by an orbit summation must have a music around itself and it has. So you start to see the art side 
in the problem. And you then we understand why, for instance, in Paris, many doctors prescribe you for an illness to listen three times a day to the raindrop pen of Chopin or the D major sonata of Beethoven, because there are certain tones there which you must or abolish certain tones in his dysfunction, which are pronounced in his sonic view. Now, that can be again very painstakingly analyzed by computers and find out what tones are for what business <coughs> essential and how the art side can go into the human field and produce out of it a certain effect in your health business. But I have been, when I was talking to you here, I have been only touching only first glimpses, giving you first glimpses of the possible scientific approach. Why with your hands you can heal? You heal the field. You have a feedback. And through the feedback, the body starts to recover. It's not that you heal the body. You heal the radiation and reproduce, reintroduce back again the feedback into the body. Now there is no doubt about that that is the future of the, of the, of the medical profession. If you, I call it the psychophysical field therapy. It can be computerized, although I don't think that any computer will cope with that one here. As Gray Walter said, if you would like to, com to make a computer like the human head, the whole United Kingdom will be not enough a space. With all the... Mm, to the possibilities of minute quantities or minute voluminosity of the all these rectifiers we use there, it will be not enough with, uh, to, comp to make a computer like this. Imagine only that you have to hit a tennis ball. How many computations you have to do in a fraction of a second? Where the ball goes, in what direction, what kind of limbs you have to move, how you have to pose yourself in order to hit the ball, what kind of kick you have to do, and where do you have to put the ball in? I used to have a trainer who put little cards like that on the, on the tennis court, and I had to put the ball on this card. I had a pleasure to, to play one in the too. But that is a computation we have to make in a fraction of a second. If you want a book on that, it's called Psycho-Cybernetics. You know that computers are cybernetic, and I don't know if it's cybernetic. There is a doctor, New York doctor, who wrote a psycho cybernetics, psychological computation. Fascinating book. Pure science, very materialistic, but excellent in giving you the exact details how the computation is going and to what is the power of your imagination. The only book in the whole literature tells you about the power of your imagination. It's not the power of you, it's your imagination, your visualization, which brings you the possibilities. If you see yourself an engineer, you will be an engineer. And in every face or set of belief, you have to see a picture, see yourself like that or that. There is no one accident in your life. The accidents are made by yourself, by your own visualization in the subconscious mind. I would have to go into the analysis of the subconscious mind and other conscious life. Which other conscious I call the whole high self, you may call it, the life of God in us, if you want to. It doesn't matter how you call it, it's still tremendous knowledge and tremendous love which it sends upon you. And then from that point of view, if you start to produce a real prayer, a meditation, Eastern meditation, with our meditation here in the West, is like university to the prep school. But if you apply to the meditation, the modern psychology, and the real knowledge of prayer, then the Eastern meditation is like a prep school to the university with other words. And this sort of prayer, or this sort of meditation, introduces you at once in the knowledge and the grasp of your subconscious and unconscious mind. You don't need a drug for that. You develop your subconscious mind with a terrific speed. A few years, and you start to develop your extrasensory perception. And if you know that what well, you usually we, educated people with a high, high standard of education, use only one millionth of a millionth of a millionth of your brain, and the rest is latent just fast asleep. 
then you may realize how powerful a man can be and how a giant he is. When he's sinking, he's going around the field and the earth is only a speck. And that's only one level. You can go in a different frequency of time and then you have a different, totally different world to see. The ideas of Plato are there. No time for discussing these things and analyzing. Anyway, I wanted to give you a sort of glimpse, a first test, test what is going to be in the future the f medicine, field medicine? There is no doubt also that you can do yourself the healing. Every one of you can help yourself, can help your family. All my children in my parish are taught. And they are helping mom and dad when they have headaches or, or any sort of other ailments. Before they go to the doctor, it will relieve the doctors a tremendous lot from the permanent cause they can't cope with. It does not by any means abolish the chemi chemical medicine, not at all. The chemistry in medicine is extremely important. The doctors are doing that utmost to heal the people, but they haven't got the physical education. Physics is essential, and psychology as well. And a part of it, if you put yourself in the world of proportions, which are musical proportions, never mind if it's astronomically size, Kepler has made that, Harmonic Simundi when he showed by harmonics that the bodies, celestial bodies, are moving according to harmonical rules, set of proportions, or you go into the set of proportions of atoms or the everyday life, it's always the same set of proportions. And once you go into that world, then the space ceases to exist. You live with the set of proportions, and you can then to start to move these set of proportions according to the possibilities of your brain, which are still living. These three things are absolutely no doubt. The interpretation, how the hand can produce a feedback or not, whether it's doing, doing its field, with the, dealing with the field of sonic nature or electromagnetic in heat or psychophysical or static electricity, the interpretation may be different. And I'm not, I'm not arguing. I haven't got the money, neither the possibility to do it to be the boy. I'm doing the general lines. But I'm quite sure that these three things that everybody can cure, that there is a field medicine, and that you can go into a quite different world when you start to live into the world of proportions. And then you can dig into the subconscious or the conscious mind. That is no doubt. And that is more or less what I can give you in a, what, an hour and a half, nearly. Sorry to be so long an outlook.